Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Today is Saturday, September 16th, and today we are talking about the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, uh, Ali El Paso, their extended university, and specifically the history tours that are available that they use to investigate many different topics, issues, and again, take you through areas of El Paso's history. So uh, you can, of course, find us streaming on air online live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app or joining us over on our various social media channels, including, of course, El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page, other Facebook pages as well, including El Paso History over on YouTube, El Paso History TV, as well as over on a Twitter and Twitch.tv these days, either under, again, El Paso History or Andrew J. Polk is where you can find us on most of these platforms. And this is, of course, the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso, along with other some of our great uh, partner groups such as the uh, Facebook group Remember in El Paso When. And we do have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking this week about the V-2 rocket that hit Juarez not during wartime. But joining us here in studio today, we are joined from my left to right by uh, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and uh, Lynn Provenzano, executive director, and David Varela, city historian and professor of history, all with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, Extended University, or OLLI El Paso. Thank you all very much for joining us here today. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy to have you all in here and talking about this because, again, Ollie is a very interesting thing, particularly for those, you know, 50 and up and the many uh, extended continuing education opportunities that come along with it. But then specifically these history tours, the different focuses that they have. And so uh, through the next couple of hours, we're going to be exploring both how this works, how people can sign up and be a part of it. Certainly one of the bigger questions, but then also what has been explored, both in some previous sessions, tours and what is coming up. Uh, some have already having happened by the time we air, but more that are coming up throughout the rest of this so how people can continue to get involved and how they of course do change it's not a uh, kind of like standard set of them there are always new things being investigated new opportunities for people to go out and so a lot of reasons for people to watch this space so to speak and or more specifically the catalog what i'm referring to as the space because there are always things that are going on and changing there and even though we are technically past this year's registration period well lynn kind of how to describe how does this work for people who are unfamiliar with ollie well, you can come and visit us at the Ollie office, which is on the UTEP campus, Miners Hall 209. And you can also look us up online, mm-hmm. which is www.utep.edu forward slash O-L-L-I. And we mm-hmm. have our catalog there. You can peruse all of the different offers that we have. We, we offer many, many courses in what we call session one and then again in session two, sure. all of which include the history tours. Absolutely, because so this is extended university. It is through UTEP, though there are if people look around them, they only exists in, in different ways around the country, right? Yes, we are affiliated with 125 other OSHA institutes across the country. Um, we say that there's uh, if you've seen one Ollie, you've seen one Ollie because we have our own sort of personality and characteristics. It's true, uh, but we are hosted by UTEP, and we're very glad to be here. Absolutely. So people can find that or even just the way I end up finding all site to reference this kind of things is just by searching Ollie El Paso to make sure you're finding the right Ollie and the way you find that information. And they do have, of course, you have the fall 2023 catalog is online and go through all of it there. So this is something that people register for. I mean, it is a extended university, but you all still do have, you know, university trappings and the, you know, the reason to sign up and people do need to sign up and have certain, well, registration and requirements along with it, right? That is correct. We ask for an annual membership and uh, it is $45 a year. And with that, you get the benefits of membership. Plus you have the opportunity to join clubs and activities, events, because we believe no one needs to be alone and that you should stay connected with each other and keep your brain alive and thriving. And then uh, if you'd like to register for classes, there is another mm-hmm. fee, but that means that you can take as many classes as you would like to take that you can fit into your schedule. Sure. And of course, that includes the tours. Absolutely. So, and that's one of the interesting things here. So we have a couple of tour guides of people who have led these tours in studio with us right now, including, of course, again, Prince McKenzie. Uh, but David, we're going to end up starting with you talking about some of the previous ones you led as Prince, you're leading some of the current ones. And uh, So David, 
uh, when it comes to the way, or really this is a question for both of you, when it comes to how you all put this together and look at doing these tours, since you all are pretty much always changing them between a each session and then particularly each year or each you know uh, semester, so to speak here, uh, how do you end up coming about these or what way do you kind of approach them when you're putting them together in order to then go into the catalog and be this kind of very formulated thing? Prince? Good question. Well, I started giving tours about 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was a Texas Western student, and I started giving tours of Juarez hmm. to students from out of town. And then I expanded to tours around El Paso, tours around the area. And then uh, when I became a full-time historian, then I continued uh, giving tours. Hmm. And there's just so much that you can do in the classroom. But if you go to a sure. historic site that really makes all the levels of history come together. Mm -hmm. And here in El Paso, with 450 years of history, it's a challenge to try to paint a, a, a word picture of what happened at each particular site. Absolutely. And so we was there when? Yeah, and, and we popped up some pictures of some of the previous tours that you've led, such as downtown El Paso, the Bowen Ranch, uh, out at the Socorro Mission, among other things. So uh, getting out and getting the true hands-on, though you can't necessarily right. always actually touch the stuff, it's a right. good way to kind of you know bring it beyond the, the academics, so to speak. Right. And it's so much more interesting, even than the pictures in the books, mm. it's so much more interesting. If that's what they tell us. No, oh, sure. So, people who are taking the tours there yeah. certainly there so and then uh david you've most recently led uh specifically in the previous sessions uh with ollie uh led a series on the you called the ollie staycation series soul of el paso hotel architecture tours so i mean i do believe in uh, previous appearances that you've had on this program that is one of your core competencies <laughs> but in putting this together then you know kind of what guided it and, and led you to come to you know the way that you did this uh well thank you for that question um so more than anything, I, when composing the tours, I thought to myself, if El Paso is looked at like people look at New York City, people in New York City never see their own museums or their Brooklyn Bridge or their Statue of Liberty or walk into the plaza or the Waldorf. So mm -hmm. I figured what a better way to kind of expose El Paso to itself and make sure that that, that beginning of falling in love with El Paso as El Pasoans begins with something as simple as hotels. And we have such historic hotels mm -hmm. with such incredible architecture and history and food and drinks and accommodations that it felt almost appropriate to start with our hotel tours here and take them, you know, from oldest to newest intermediate history, okay. Mexican revolution history, modern history. Things like that. But it's it's the ability to bring people out, I think, in my mind, and to have them experience their city in another way and have something for them to see and say, I am part of this region. I am part of this city. This is my downtown, and I should fully you know, explore and go out and see what the rest of El Paso mm -hmm. visitors see. So, not to say that this is to exclusion with these ones, but certainly I'd say a focus here, of a, you know, particularly a lot of these, I think, all of these being in the downtown area, the ones that uh, you did the tours on, the Hotel Paso del Norte, the Plaza Hotel, Pioneer Park, uh, the Stanton House, and the Loft Hotels and Gardner Hotel, all in downtown El Paso, mm -hmm. and that people, you know, living, working, more working than anything, or passing through downtown, it can be really easy to just kind of drive by or walk by and, and never look up, so to speak, right? Exactly, exactly right. You'd never think driving down El Paso Street, going through roundabouts or down San Antonio Street, that you're passing some of the largest and most historic buildings in all of Texas history, or some of the first buildings that created empires worldwide, like sure, like, like the plaza at one point, the Hilton. Yeah, or, or even recovery points of empires. It was it, that history on its own is, mm -hmm. is fascinating here. And then so it prints in the same kind of vein here. You're taking people a little bit, I don't know, further afield, but not necessarily just the stuff that they would pass by every day. Because I mean, like some of these places uh, that you've been to recently, decently remote, like the Bowen Ranches, I don't think I've ever particularly just 
driven past the, at least the places where you were at at the Bowen Ranch. So also taking people, you know, out to places that they, again, in a different way, but still may never have truly paid attention to with maybe some different accessibility concerns going along with that. Yeah. We really try to connect our students with a cowboy, a blacksmith, and what it was like uh, taking care of the animals. Mm -hmm. And in addition to uh, the landscape, the history of the Lincoln County Wars Mm -hmm. and uh, the Indian battles that occurred in the Tularosa Basin, all of this was in the purview of the Bowen Ranch. Ah, okay. And uh, so, so much happened. And uh, uh, so it it gave us an opportunity to share uh, some of this Wild West history uh, that's uh, a little different from the gunfights downtown. Mm -hmm. Oh, which have been there own focuses and documentary production, all those kind of things yeah. here. So, again, get, get, just getting down to brass tacks again for a minute. If people want to be involved with these and want to be involved with OSHA overall, technically this year's registration has closed. But given that there are a lot of interest in this and that people, I mean, if they want to become a member of Ollie, they can almost always do that. And when it comes to these tours, as it's not a class commitment, so to speak, there's a little bit of leeway that I there, think you'd want to talk about, right? There is some leeway, and we're always taking late registrations. Even though we just started our first session for fall, we do have a second session Absolutely. that is brand new and that uh, that will begin in October. But call us. Come and, you know, it's uh, 915-747-6280. And, you know, talk with us. Learn more about us. Um, we started working with Prince and his partner, Ron Lyman, and mm-hmm. then David Varela here uh, to do tours to bring something new and exciting to our program. And we've discovered that there are gems here in El Paso. There are oh, so, yeah. so many gems. And they bring them to life for us by, by offering these tours. And then also in some of the classes that we hold on campus yeah. and online. So, again, the basic requirements here, people need to do be members. They do need to be 50 and up to take part in this because mm-hmm. that is the charter organization reason for existence for Ollie, for the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. But within that, there's a whole lot going on. So we're going to be talking a whole lot more about what these tours are and what the history is, but also a little bit about some of the classes as well, particularly after we take this next break due for that one already. Here we are, of course, tuned in to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 6. 90 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polkin. Again, joining us here in studio, that was Lynn Provenzano, executive director, but also, of course, here with us, uh, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and uh, David Varela, city historian and professor of history, all with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, or OLLI El Paso. So to find that, again, just search OLLI, O-L-L-I, El Paso. That's the way I find it most of our, but again, utep.edu, and then look up OLLI. You'll be able to find it there as well. But taking that next break right now, back after this with a whole lot more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. 
go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara gibbon known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara gibbon known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, uh, we are the El Paso History Radio Show over on Facebook. You can go there and do many of our other social channels, but specifically Facebook. Again, El Paso History Radio Show does have our weekly promo announcements with the upcoming subjects each and every week with a little bit of a graphic preview of it. So check that out there. Also over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV has the same video archive that we've been doing of the programs as we've been airing it on our social media, but also does have the additional inclusion of the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions, uh, covering the last more than couple of decades of documentary film production here in the region done by the company, uh, completely uploaded for free to view at your leisure, plus the more recent 20 ABC7 TV series segments from El Paso history about uh, the different, many different basic topics, but introducing to another and for the next generation of many of those kind of like basic, like such as Water Fort Bliss, Tramway, other things like that. So check that out there. Again, on the YouTube channel, El Paso History TV, Bernie Sargent was in front of the camera for a lot of that. I was behind it for pretty much most of it, doing the production on it there. And, of course, a reminder to support some of our advertisers. Pepe's Restaurant in Canyotillo is open for in-house dining at 6761 Donovan Drive. You can call Pepe's at 915-877-2152. That's 915 877 2152 will not be able to head out there this 
Saturday, but you can do mostly after each show. We tend to go out there and uh, congregate and talk about the history topics, but of course they have the great old Griggs recipes, new food old recipes, but also home of the Juan and only margarita. So again, 6761 Donovan Drive, Pepe's Restaurant. But of course, joining us again here in studio, we still have again from my left to right, uh, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, Lynn Provenzano, executive director, and uh, David Varela, uh, hi city historian and professor of history, all with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Thank you all very much for being with us here again today. Thank Thanks you. again. So uh -huh. talking about all the overalls, we're going to be talking about the history tours a lot more. I just kind of want to make the finer point that, A, there's a lot that is within the scope of Ollie and a lot of the different, I mean, it's a whole catalog for a reason, basically, because it's not just a, yeah, well, here's, the, here's the bullet points. And I mean, even just going through the bullet points, that is the catalog. Uh, it takes many pages, but there are other both history related and just kind of general interest topics that are presented throughout it, right? That's right, Andrew. We have a lot of categories that we cover. We cover art mm -hmm. appreciation and fitness and fun. We cover food, uh, hands-on arts. If you're interested in oil painting or doing something creative, we have uh, theater and film, languages. But for history, we're, we have a course coming up at the uh, second session of, uh, of this term uh, for, on the uh, history of immigration. We mm -hmm. also have uh, a course on Finland and we are mm -hmm. offering later in this session, at the end of the month, the World War II Black Panthers Armored Division. And that will be very, very interesting. And then David is offering us a, a course called The Ground that we Walk, on Which You Walk, which is all about El Paso neighborhoods and learning more mm. about where we live and what has gone on before us. So we cover a lot of territory when it comes to our, our course information, our topics. So there's something for everyone, something. So just a little bit of a distinction here to be made between the tours, which are single session events here, a you are on the tour, and then when the tour is over, that's it. Uh, the one you're talking about right here, the history classes, mm -hmm. those are recurring ones and ones that then are, again, that, that time commitment they were referring to earlier where you've got a, you know, depending on uh, which one it is, a, a regular recurring time frame that need to be blocked off in order to fully participate into it, right? That is right. We have some two-week classes, four-week classes, six-week classes. So you can go back and you can keep building on the information mm. that you're learning. We believe that curiosity never gets old. Learning never gets old. So are there things that you always wanted to know about, never took the time to learn? And now you can learn them. You can, you can come to a classroom situation, whether it's in person or online, and you can learn more and sort of feed that curiosity that you've always had or you never had time to look into. And there's, there's just um, so much interest in, in what we're offering. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, come and find out who we are. We have chair yoga even, just different things that oh, will sure. that will motivate you as a person and keep you keep you engaged. And uh, pickleball as we were talking about. Oh yes. We <laughs> just uh, we've included pickleball this this term. Among many other things, but just kind of as an example here. And again, all that available. You can find the full fall catalog online. Uh, just look up Ollie El Paso or go to utep.edu and then uh, look for that information there. Again, uh, 50 years or older, able to sign up and be a member of that. But utep.edu slash Ollie, that's utep.edu slash O-L-L-I. So then, uh, David, when it comes to the course that specifically you have uh, for this session on, again, the ground on which we walk, the neighborhoods, kind of what would you say is the difference between people considering tours or the class, or it's any combination there, and of what you would want them to know about, just kind of how what the differences are, what they should be prepared be prepared for. Great question. So, <clears throat> as opposed to my tours, mm. which are usually it's a lot of interaction. I, there's a lot of physical things that I kind of point out and you know make sure that everyone covers. Mm. My classes, though, are they're not very ordinary in that I don't cover the typical the typical subjects of El Paso. Mm. So, for instance, this semester's class, you hear neighborhoods. You think of El Paso neighborhoods. You think of Kern Place. You think of Sunset Heights. You think of Austin Terrace, Manhattan Heights. Mm. I will be covering different parts of the city, mm. like Northeast El Paso, like oh, Smeltertown, okay. like Sparks. So places mm. that mm. are of significance to so many people but are oftentimes not focused on in El Paso as a whole, if you will. And that is the that is the majority of all of my classes. I study the little micro histories and 
Okay. Little little things that make up the significant things that are El Paso today while kind of dissecting why they happened and how we live and why we are how we are here in El Paso in itself. So places, I mean, in the neighborhood sense that could be walked through, so could be toured on its own, but might be a little bit too expansive for any one afternoon kind of thing here to uh, just wander around and see all of the points to be made. Right, right. And and that's why, that's why in class, uh, these classes are oftentimes a little bit better for those people who want to do the tours, sometimes can't do the tours. This is still a great way to still be interactive, learn something about the city that you live in. And get something out of it. Absolutely. So, again, uh, that's David Varela, city historian and a professor of history with the uh, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And, again, all the details on them. Uh, Ollie, you find it online uh, for just utep.edu slash Ollie, O-L-L-I. And, again, of course, joining us here in studio, uh, Lynn Provenzano, executive director, and Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, all, again, with Ollie. Got to take that next break right now. Coming out of this break, talking more about some of the history tours and delving into the history uh, that is then revealed through them. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History radio show after this break here on news radio 690 ktsm you're listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archive radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by chief administrator barbara given baney known as bgb check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of el paso history remember in el paso when on facebook The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. 
Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Uh, of course, a reminder to support and the support that we appreciate from some of the other groups who are focusing on different aspects of El Paso's history, including, of course, the great group over at Celebration of Our Mountains. Find them online, celebrationofourmountains.org, though if that's a little bit unwieldy, you can just search it up on your search engine of choice there. And they do have a lot of different events, tours, often in conjunction with some of the state parks, but they do have some other events coming up that they will be also further taking part in, like uh, one that is coming up, uh, well, a little bit later in uh, this year. They're going to be doing some of the... Uh, Space Festival, Peak Challenges, and, of course, their monthly socials that they'll also be doing. That's one of their major features that they're having each and every month, the last Thursday of the month, so happening the 28th for this month of September. Their monthly social happening at Artovino's Desert Crossing out there in, uh, in uh, Sunland Park, New Mexico. Again, you want to find them online, be a part of it, or really any of the events that they have and going on, and particularly leading those tours. Again, best way to do it is to find them, again, online, celebrationofourmountains.org. That's celebration celebration of our mountains Dot org. And also, of course, want to mention one of our other great sponsors of the program there, Economy Wholesale Grocers, with two locations in El Paso at 1500 East Paisano and 411 North Zaragoza. Economy Wholesale Grocers, Economy Cash and Carry. Find them online at economywholesalegrocers.com. That's economywholesalegrocers.com, a part of El Paso history in their own right and proud sponsors of the El Paso History Radio Show. But again, joining us here in studio to talk about history tours in the region and specifically doing that through the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. We again do have a Prince McKenzie, Lynn Provenzano, and a David Varela, the uh, history instructor, executive director, and city historian, respectively, among other things, with, again, Ollie. So, uh, David, we were talking a little bit before the break about some of the previous history tours that you have led because pretty much every session there are different ones that are coming through so if anyone's interested in it don't worry there'll be more to come but there's also a reason to pay attention to all the ones that are coming up so you did particularly and this was from the uh, summer session most recently so people just missed this one so not trying to give them FOMO but an example of why <laughs> they should pay attention here you did it called it the Ollie Staycation Series Soul of El Paso Hotel Architecture Tours. And so you do have some personal competencies having worked along or with, you know, some of the hotels in El Paso, right? Correct, yes. So I have been fortunate enough to not only work with a lot of these hotels, um, I work directly with them currently mm -hmm. as well. And I have even been the historian and concierge at, at right. one of, at a few of them actually. Yeah, so you so, have a lot of experience with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and again, the tours... Hopefully, we will be doing something similar next summer uh, okay. in the early Secret summer. Mm -hmm. So we'll be going from place to place, hopefully, with a little bit more information and more entry into different things that some of the students haven't seen before. But yes, to go over a, a little bit of them. So my initial tour at the beginning of the summer mm -hmm. was with the Hotel Paso del Norte. And of course, this is one of the, the gem buildings of not mm -hmm. only El Paso, but all of West Texas. And... We would, I mean, of course, we cover the history in general, if you sure. will. But we go in into the building, explore the tiny little details, the marble, the light hmm. fixtures, the dome, of course. Yeah, of course. The oldest rooftop terraces in the state of Texas are on this building. Hmm. One of the biggest buildings in the world made entirely of gypsum, if you will, as well. Um, so it's huh. it's absolutely stunning. Um, 
I do go in depth. We kind of did a little bit of a walk around outside the building and then inside the building, took everyone up to the top terrace to what's mm. now called the Mirador, the original ballroom from right. 1915. Um, so it was fantastic. When we continued on the tour, the next week after we did the Plaza Hotel. Mm. And the Plaza Hotel is, again, another modern marvel, I think, of engineering in El Paso. Mm. Of course, it is another Henry Trost. And I would always make, of course, these are architectural tours. Right. I would always make the point to my students to think about the fact that 30 years prior to the plaza, when the Paso del Norte was built, our travel was horses, carriages, trunks. Yeah. You weren't coming to El Paso and leaving the next day. You were here for a few days before you went off to Santa Fe, Chihuahua, anywhere. Um, so I always make that comparison, how we went from trunks and carriages to right across the street, trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah. So, of course, uh, another fun thing that, you know, my students ended up learning is that when Conrad Hilton opens the now Plaza Hotel, when it was the Hilton mm. Motor Inn, uh, he did so very, very closely to the declaration of the 1929 stock market crash. Oh. So right before the yeah. Depression was when this building was inaugurated. And one of the reasons that Conrad Hilton even survived going bankrupt completely and going under yeah. was because he became the general manager of the Hotel Paso del Norte for well over a decade. Yeah, and at one point, I mean, nowadays, I mean, sure, Hilton is practically synonymous with hotel mm -hmm. and with the idea of, okay, am I going to find a Hilton or, or what have you if you're traveling in that kind of means? And so the idea that at one point that the empire had been because i mean he'd, he'd seen previous expansion but then again economic difficulties and reality often intervene at one point that was the empire was constrained to this single point this single edifice that they had previously constructed and then re-expanded back from there correct yes and whenever i tell this story on tours in class on the trolley tours i do as well i always tell people before 1963 when conrad hilton packed everything up and went to dallas mm. and today dallas is known as kind of a hilton hub city if yeah. you will for the company before there was dallas and before 1963 there was el paso and this was the cradle of the empire that is now global mm. so yeah. again something that the city really should pride itself on one of those little tiny details that we should pride ourselves on, really. Yeah, and maybe not totally you know, revealable through an architecture tour, but certainly willing to and relevant to be brought up there along with it is, again, the use of it. And, of course, I mean, the fact that it's been redone, reopened, refinished, making it very much able to be gone through. And so, I mean, the architectural elements of it, just even those couple of here, the Hotel Paso del Norte, of course, is fascinating in its own right in that it's a... I still kind of think of it as a, a dual building because there's pretty, you know, some of the previous, the older style edifice that is the front of it and then the expanded part, the major tower part that we think of it to this day. Correct. Correct. So I will say it, it is an expansive building and so expansive that usually, and I tell you this as someone who worked housekeeping in that hotel, <laughs> um, normally hotels will have five, six room types maybe. This one has well over 15. Really? Yes. Wow. It's, I, it's very interesting. A lot of, because of so much modification in yeah. the older wings, you have rooms that have one window, rooms that have longer living rooms than, you know, than the sleeping area, a big sleeping area and a small little living area. Some have breakfast nooks, some have little living rooms. It's, it's a fascinating building, even just to see the room layouts and yeah. how they were modified. I mean, this building went from having 300 plus rooms in 1912 mm. to 351 after 1985 when Weston buys the building. And now it has 351 hmm. after 2016. Okay. So it's fascinating to see how even architecturally people have shifted from having a room with a bed to a room with a bed and a commode to a room with a bed, a commode and uh, a radio, a telephone, a shower. It's, it's incredible what people used to 
be content with when traveling way back when. I mean, almost a, a history of hospitality in its own right about how it evolved over the years here. Quite and, literally, and, yes. And kind of a, a good way to exemplify that, honestly, is one of the other ones that you also had is when you did the tours on of the Gardner Hotel, of which has had its own, as a previous guest in the show in their own right, a lot of its own modification, malleability of the idea, the mission behind it, and of what the concept of, you know, what was considered appropriate, valuable, desirable for the traveling public over the, you know, different centuries. Correct. And luckily we were able to see it very extensively, the Gardner Hotel, thanks to Miss Stephanie Nahab, and uh, her, who, whose family has actually owned the Gardner since the 40s. Mm -hmm. um, again, another prevalent Lebanese family in our Lebanese community that is now El Paso's history. Sure. Um, and the building itself is fascinating because it sits in a position where you would have found most businesses and buildings and hotels in El Paso in the early 20th century. Mm. There's the entrance to the hotel, which elevates over a bunch of storefronts, right. which are now clubs and bars in El Paso's Pride Square, which I, I mentioned this to my students, and I find the irony to strike with the force of a cartoon anvil. <laughs> so the development of that block is is regarded to uh, Preston E. Gardner. Mm. As such, so as such, the Gardner Hotel. Of course. Preston E. Gardner is one of the men who helped bring the Ku Klux Klan to El Paso. And ironically today, yeah. mm -hmm. that quarter is one of Texas's oldest gay districts. So the rolling around in that grave must be very, very profuse, <laughs> and it makes me so happy. But again, a little detail, yeah. you know, that goes into that. And the irony that is today Pride Square and what I would consider the Pride Pride District, the Gardner District, if you will. Yeah, I mean, people are familiar, if they're familiar with, you know, some of the restaurants and, again, like you said, some of the other institutions that are around there. Mm -hmm. Um not remembering any off the top of my head at the moment, but I mean the the way that's just kind of designed there because a lot of I mean the other hotels we've talked about so far at the release on your tours that you have done here are they are that block like they take up that whole area and Correct. the Gardner Hotel is the block itself, but it's not that's the again not the only thing that is there because again they are then over all of it and then all of these you know street level entry businesses almost a more city style kind of thing the way you might see it and like we've made previous allusions to like New York City and other places like that of where you've got you know it would be you know dwellings lodgings residences above the street level you know walk-ups you know one or two story walk-ups that kind of thing and then there will be you know institutions whether it be businesses other you know opportunities for people to go straight in off the street and that is a older style, but one that is still, I mean, very viable in that area as a business enterprise. I agree. And since you mentioned New York, another building that I covered, two actually uh, that I covered, one in particular is very much in the style of a New York City building, much mm. like the Plaza, which is Empire style. Right. Another Empire style-esque mm -hmm. building is the O.T. Bassett Tower, today's uh, Aloft Hotel. And designed by a Danish, uh, a Danish architect initially, the plan was to have setbacks every couple, every every mm -hmm. so many stories. So that's why the building today, if you were to examine it and then examine buildings that it was modeled after, like the Dakota House in mm -hmm. New York City, mm -hmm. where where the film Rosemary's Baby was filmed, you see a lot of these monolithic-looking sculptures, a lot of stone, a lot of copper that is now turned green, so like course, the Statue yeah. of Liberty and whatnot. It's a very, very interesting. They used to have Turkish baths in the basement of really? the A-loft. Yeah, there huh. used to be clawfoot tubs in the basement. Um, and then right down the way is the Stanton House Hotel. Mm -hmm. So Stanton House is probably one of my favorite buildings and hotel concepts in that it was never meant to be a hotel because it was actually a furniture store. It was the home of the Rogers Furniture no, home right. Store. Mm -hmm. Uh, matter of fact, on the back of the building, you can still see if you're standing on Mesa Street in front of the other entrance of the Crest Building and you look toward uh, toward Stanton Street, mm. on the back of the building you can see this shape, this heart shape that now says Sears, which at one point when that was a Sears, mm. prior to that, when it was the Rogers Furniture Company, that was their logo, a giant heart. Huh, and okay. it was the biggest mm. furniture store in the entire Southwest for quite a while. Mm. Now... That being said, there are so many interesting things about this hotel, despite it being small, only 45 rooms, very mm -hmm. boutique, very artsy, and very eclectic. 
70 tons of steel are in the lobby itself that make up this beautiful design. Wow. And I call it El Paso's El Paso's open air lobby art gallery because the art in there is so gorgeous, it's so singular. A lot of it is local, and the best part in my opinion is that the details are what make up a lot of a lot of the beauty of when visitors come to see El Paso. They'll go into these lobbies and they'll see, you know, there's a sculpture of an alligator. Hmm. hmm. I wonder why there's a sculpture of an alligator in mm-hmm. El Paso, mm-hmm. Texas. You know, things like that. The little details that if you know, you know, but if you don't know, kind of scratches your brain a little bit as far as curiosity. Interesting. So again, uh, that's uh, David Varela, city historian and professor of history with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Again, all the details on them at utep.edu slash Ollie. That's utep, U-T-E-P dot E-D-U slash O-L-L-I. And again, also joining us here in studio, we do have again, uh, Lynn Provenzano, executive director and a uh, Prince McKenzie history instructor and art historian, all with the same, all with Ollie El Paso. Got to take that next break right now. But coming out of this break, uh, talking a little bit more about some of these previous tours and then going on to well, a whole lot more as we talk about the way they've done this and the way you can all of course interact with it so stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, 
El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, we have some other great partners in promoting different aspects of El Paso's history, including uh, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. Find them over on talkandrockradio.com, where friends meet at the intersection of life, inspiration, and music with a lot of different remembrances, particularly from the golden age of rock and roll that Rick had his own own hand in but often categorizing and cataloging the different performances performers performance venues that happened and came through our region uh, you know some of the most recent ones such as stacked records warren ham uh, johnny madara do the bop at the hop a whole lot more find him again online talk and rock radio.com that's talk a n d rock radio.com but again, joining us here in studio right now, as we've had throughout the first hour right now, again, from my left to right, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, Lynn Provenzano, executive director, and uh, David Varela, city historian and professor of history, all with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, talking about some of the previous tours that have come on. So we're getting close to the end of this hour of the show right now, but just to kind of close it out a little bit then. So, David, we mentioned a little bit about some of your, you know, the Stanton House and Aloft Hotels uh, in their own right. I feel like the Stanton House is one of the ones that I'm the least familiar with. So, we'll definitely be interested to hear more about that one. But, like you mentioned, there are more that you're working on as well because, I mean, one of the major ones that came to my mind as a hotel and architecture to be viewed in its own right through that lens is the way you did it the El Paso Hotel Architecture Tours is that you did this, uh, you mean, a few of them had to call the shots, you had to do a list of them, but there are more like the Cortez comes to mind, as well as, you know, many other different ones in El Paso that may or may not have been hotels previously, like, I mean, the OT Bassett Tower, I went through there previously myself when it was offices. And so the transformation that is also seen there, and there are, of course, other ones that are a little bit more modern. You got into like, uh, you know, the uh, Hotel Indigo and things like that, all of which I've seen, you know, this kind of revamping and I hesitate to say revitalization because that puts a lot of baggage on it. But, you know, the constant use of it is certainly important. Absolutely. And I, I love the fact that you mentioned Hotel Indigo because I, that was my first introduction to working with hotels. Oh, I was okay. their concierge as well as their front desk agent as well. Um, and to be frank with you, having worked there in a time right after it had opened, mm -hmm. seeing hotels in El Paso just a few years ago and seeing them now is something absolutely mesmerizing because you went really? from having this very, very unique boutique hotel, which was huge in El Paso at the time, to all of a sudden companies recognizing, hey, there is a need for this niche mm -hmm. in this corner of the state. True. Then all of a sudden rooftop terraces and bars became a thing. Mm. And all of a sudden okay. let's go down and dine at the hotel and drink at the hotel. And this is exactly what these tours for me are all about. Getting out there and exploring and being part of the city mm. as mm -hmm. even visitors at a hotel who are local, not just for travelers. And Luckily, uh, hopefully, I should say Indigo is one of the hotels that I do plan to ah, add to okay. the tour, um, along with other hotels that people may not may not think would okay. be significant, like the DoubleTree, at one point called the International Hotel. If anyone True. remembers when Elvis came to El Paso, early 70s, this is where he stayed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ali McGraw also stayed there. Mm -hmm. um, but see, aside from that, 
I do think that it is important to get out to see these places, to, to know them, even if it's just for the experience. So, and you're right, they do range from modern, like the Indigo and the Doubletree today, to older, like what once was the Hotel Cortez, or for anyone else that remembers the Hotel McCoy, hmm, next okay. to what used to be the White House building downtown. Oh, yeah. So, or, or such as like the Gateway Hotel and although that's right. the Gateway Regional Enterprise that came along with it, that's its own its own whole story, even if that building is, has its own interesting recent history as well. Yes, and it's it's a that one in particular is is a is it's a rough one. It's but a, it's a very of, yeah. fascinating one because it didn't start as a hotel. It's actually a trost renovated exactly. hotel, mm. kind of like the Driscoll in Austin, one of Texas's mm-hmm. oldest hotels, is a trost renovated hotel. Um, ironically enough, the International Hotel starts in the 1880s as a major hub for the Creel family. The Creel, hmm. as in Creel Chihuahua, one of the most powerful banking families of all of Latin America. This was their hub bank building after hmm. the revolution began, and they refuged here to El Paso, them and the Terrazas family. So there's a whole lot of history that is going to be coming up here. So, again, sneak preview of get some potential future tours here. But, again, all this is able to be seen what is going on and what will be available next by going to, again, uh, utip.edu slash ollie so that people can see, again, the full catalog, what is available, and, again, what is being offered through the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. So we're going to be having to uh, – we're losing you there, David, because you got to depart for this part of our recording. But we'll be keeping around here with, again, Prince McKenzie and Lynn Prov. Zano, again, respectively, history instructor and art historian and exec director with Ollie. So we're talking more about what are the offers and what is upcoming here in these current sessions here. So stick around with us and you stay there with us as well here on the El Paso History Radio Show, taking that top of the hour news break and coming right back with a whole lot more. So stay tuned here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page. Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free Many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. You can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV 
and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free Many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. You can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history, Remember in El Paso When, on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. 
go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk, continuing on, of course, with our discussion with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute Extended University and the representatives from Ollie will still have with us here in the studio. But starting out hour two of the program, as we usually do with a history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk, talking this week about the V-2 rocket that did impact in Ciudad Juarez. On May 30, 1947, a V-2 rocket fired from the White Sounds Proving Ground in New Mexico crashed on top of a rocky knoll three and a half miles south of the Juarez Business District in Mexico. The giant missile exploded in a desolate area of the city near a cemetery. An official announcement from White Sands said the failure of the rocket's German-made gyroscope caused it to swerve from its northerly course. It said there was also an error in judgment on the part of the Safety Control Department in not shutting off the rocket motors as soon as it was determined the missile was off course. The violent blast shook virtually every building in El Paso and Juarez, and it startled residents of both cities, who swamped newspaper offices, police headquarters, and radio stations with anxious telephone inquiries. The terrific impact of the rocket, which contained only telemetry equipment and no explosives, scooped out a perfectly rounded crater about 50 feet in diameter and 24 feet deep. Only a few scraps of metal were found around the crater when nearby residents reached the scene. Army authorities from White Sands and Fort Bliss rushed to the scene as soon as they learned of the rocket's failure and expressed their regret to Mexican officials for the rocket crashing on Mexican soil. The missile was fired at 7.30 p.m., reaching an altitude of 40 miles and in flight for five minutes. Since it carried no explosives, all damage done by the rocket was caused only by the force of the four and a half ton V-2 ramming the earth at 12 miles per minute. Mexican soldiers were stationed on the rim of the crater to guard the site, working with American military police officers to keep sightseers and souvenir hunters away. The shock of the impact was felt as far away as Anthony, New Mexico and south to Fabens. Our thanks to the Facebook page Remember in El Paso Win for the research on this history moment. I'm Jackson Polk for the El Paso History Radio Show. And we do, of course, appreciate our great partners in El Paso history work, including specifically Barbara Given Bainey, operator of the great Facebook group called Remember in El Paso When. Go there for archive pictures galore, including some of the things being talked about in these history moments. They have more than 34,000 members as of last check. And it is an impressive group in that right, but they do ask that please remember the administrators do work hard in researching photos with our history attached. So when editors use their photo, they do ask that credit be given to their site. Again, a lot of credit to be given to, again, Chief Admin Owner and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, along with admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, Jim Gerber, Dan Graves, and moderators Ben Vincent, Jaime Medrano, and Al Lowe. It is no mean feat to keep such a large group on task and on track, and they're 
always looking for a few more good hands and eyeballs on the situation. But if you just want to join and be a part of it and again see the discussions about El Paso's history, again, the Facebook group, Remember in El Paso When, find over on Facebook as a group, Remember in El Paso When. But again, joining us here again, continuing on with us this hour in studio, we do have again Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and Lynn Provenzano, executive director with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, also known as OLLI, O-L-L-I. Find them online at utep.edu slash OLLI, where, of course, they have the fall session going on right now. Session one right now, continuing education for adults age 50 and over. So you can find out all the details online there. But again, there are many different types of tours here, including got a few uh, pictures of you, uh, prints up there this one out at the uh, archaeology museum off of trans mountain in uh, northeast el paso and then of course we do have some of the ones out at the bowen ranch and in downtown el paso and lynn i think you're at least in uh, a couple of these as well right a couple of these pictures a few <laughs> yeah because the way these tours work here is again for those that are just joining us ollie is a extended and you're continuing education for again those 50 and over and have a lot of classes, clubs, events, but these tours are unique in their own right in that they get you out and seeing specific things here. So uh, for this specific session, uh, you all have a few that are coming out. One that, as we are then airing this episode, will have already gone by, uh, the overview at the Pass of the North. So giving some you know, very you know overall information about you know the founding and the creation and things about this area. But there's still a whole lot more to come throughout uh, the rest of this session going on basically towards the end of October and then from the end of October basically through the end of the year just a whole lot of tours and information that'll be given out during it right right so for the one that we have coming up here uh or the one that is uh, again now having happened uh, the one they overview at the pass of the north for those that ended up missing that one by the time we're airing what kind of information or focuses uh was the well, the basis of that one well we really had a good time talking about the pass of the north why is it called that mm -hmm. what's what's the reason and I like to ask questions. So I ask the question, what is La Toma? Mm -hmm. And that's the document that Juan de Oñate created that gave them the title to the, uh, what we now call the state of New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, what was the Treaty of Velasco and how did it affect the history of El Paso? Uh, mm -hmm. And so, and then we talked about... Uh, the roads, the trails, the Camino Real, of course, the first most important road, and then the Butterfield Overland Stage Line, sure, and then the coming of the railroads in 1881, and we look at the two railroad bridges. The first one was constructed by the Chinese, <clears throat> and as the Chinese were approaching, going across New Mexico from mm. Deming, <clears throat> building the railroad, Trees were cut in California, hmm. and they built the largest bridge that had ever been constructed over the Rio Grande right across the river out of redwood timbers. <clears throat> Didn't realize they were redwood, yeah. And so then they came into El Paso in 1881. <clears throat> So, I mean, the continuing history of the past, whether it be, again, you know, Paso del Rio del Norte, the way it was then found and then crossed and then into the, you know, first uh, excursion into what is now, you know, the United States and this part of North America by, you know, European settlers. And, of course, the way in the whole argument about the first Thanksgiving, I know. But the La Toma was, and there have been some reenactments that have happened and uh, some of the things you all even talk about during the tour is out to, like, the, you know, San Elizario Mission Presidio and part of that and one of the re recreations they have there is that that, okay, there's a lot of it in popular history, the concept of, all right, I come and planted a flag and this place is out all now ours. And like, sure, that was kind of a component of it, but there was more right. of a process as well. And right. so La Toma talking about that as the formal assumption of authority. I mean, again, there's an argument to be made about it's a, of the, because the expanse they were talking about was, wasn't it uh, all lands drained by the Rio Grande or something oh, along right. those lines here? That right. the people on the northern parts of that, that, because I mean, there wasn't exactly radio or telephone or telecommunication right. at that point, uh, that would have been a very important news to them when they said, oh, by the way, we're in charge of all this land. Oh, no, we did that ceremony a long time ago. It's all been set. Yeah. They would have been thinking the heck are you talking about but still it was a more formal process than just you know planting a flag and saying all right this is ours now even if again some realities do come into play so then we got into the discussion of the industrial corridor that mm -hmm. developed through that pass 
And it started with a Hart's mill mm, mm. grinding corn, grinding meal for the, the Mexican government, for the Mexican people, for the U.S. Army. Mm, mm. And uh, then 1887 came the smelter, mm -hmm. the town smelter. And then uh, the brick plant uh, came in about 1895 on the other side of the river, on right. Mount Cristo Rey side of the river. And then the cement plant came about 1910. And that made a tremendous difference uh, in the construction of the hotels downtown that oh, sure. we were just talking about a, a little while ago. Yeah, because, I mean, having the brick, I mean, most of those are brick edifices or, you know, different types right. of masonry that come along with it. So with the gathering for this one, we're talking about a pretty expansive swaths of history and yeah. of, you know, locations throughout here. So right. uh, this being a tour and not just a class, as we also talked about previously, where was the gathering for this one in particular? Okay, well, we, we went up to a bluff overlooking the, the, uh, the, the, the canyon, and uh, over there uh, uh, south of Executive Center. Okay. And actually that was a favorite spot for the photographers that photographed the, the chimney coming down at Asarco. Yeah, yep. And, uh, but also from that perspective, we also talked about the unusual geology, how important the geology is. And from that spot, you actually see the dome that was created mm, when mm. when uh, igneous rock came up and formed the peak, and then the sedimentary rock just opened up like a flower. Mm. And looking at those rocks now, we found dinosaur trackways. Yep, talking about and so Mount Cristo Rey there. Right. Yep, and it's a uh, caldera. Yeah, right. And then metamorphic rock came up on either side, and those are the little mountains that UTEP is built on. Right. And so, so it, it's really an, another aspect of prehistory. Yeah. Before time. Uh, it's a pretty good swath and, and area to and look so, at there. And, of course, I have to always say whenever we're talking about the geology of Mount Cristo Rey, the phrase that I learned many years ago that I will always stick with me, hyperbyssal andesite pluton being the name of the formation right. that is Mount Cristo Rey right. as a volcano that never happened, that it grew and it pushed up the ground, and that's why the dinosaur tracks that were ground exactly. level got pushed up near vertical is because it, all, it grew and it grew, but it never quite breached. And so that's why Mount Cristo Rey to this day is basically the plumbing of a volcano that never happened. That's right. So that's a pretty good spot to look at these things and to see some of the swaths here. But uh, there's a whole lot more that you have coming up in this session as well, okay. including focusing on many different and more, I would say, more specific ways. Because, again, th that first one, pretty broad and a lot of oh, yeah. large swaths of history. Though I will also say, like, uh, the next one that you have coming up uh, Wednesday, September 20th, uh, Ponce's Rancho to Pioneer Plaza. Right. That's also a pretty expansive swath of history in its own right. If Pretty well focused on then downtown El Paso, so to speak. Exactly. And so I like to ask questions. Mm. And so here's a question. I don't give away the answer. Okay. But where was Franklin Town? Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, why do we call this particular part of, of downtown Pioneer Plaza? Mm -hmm. And where did Ponce build his rancho? And we're actually going to take a look at it with a painting that was uh, painted in 1853. And uh, there was a cemetery on a hill up above, and a an artist, one of our military artists with mm -hmm. a, a surveyor, got up there and looked down, and he painted the whole landscape. And so now we know exactly where everything was. Mm -hmm. And so we're going then we're going to walk around those areas Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the coming of the railroads brought a tremendous change. And uh, all of the adobe village uh, that was there is gone. And then cast iron and brick structures start rising. And we're going to look at the 1880s buildings. Yeah, because that, that, so, that was, was one of the differences of El Paso. It's often thought rivers are often, at least when it comes to 
you know, pre-modern transportation often associated with, you know, commerce and, of course, water source of life. And that was one of the particular focuses is for our region, because if you weren't next to an easily available source of water, you weren't living there. Nothing was mm-hmm. living there. I mean, that's why talking about the Camino Real, the Jornada del Muerto was a particularly difficult stretch because there was no available water right. and why people and things don't live there. But so El Paso being on a waterway, but not a particularly navigable one because there wasn't a as much as the uh, Boundary and Water uh, Commission may have had the commissioner originally coming out to this part when assumed by the United States dragging steel bottom boats with him, they were not really something that you were right. taking a lot of travel along with. So as much as, you know, the overland travel was certainly important in this area, the arrival of the railroads, certainly a sea change, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But we've got to take that first break of this hour right now. Again, that's Prince McKenzie, uh, history instructor and art historian, along with uh, joining us here in studio, Lynn Provenzano, executive director, all with Ollie, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute at the University of Texas at El Paso. Again, their fall session going on right now. They still do take late registration, so find them all the details at UTEP. Dot edu slash ollie that's u-t-e-p dot edu slash o-l-l-i got to take that next break right now coming out of this talking a whole lot more about these tours and the history they reveal in our region so stay tuned for more on the el paso history radio show after this break here on news radio 690 ktsm You're listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archive radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659, and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, want to tell you a little bit about what we got coming up for you next week on the program. Next week, delving more into both history and prehistory in our region. Going to be joined by uh, or now retiring or retired UTEP professor uh, David Carmichael, talking about the indigenous history of our region, going from the modern and just pre-modern era to prehistory, even of the different groups. Groups, uh, tribes, and even before tribes was truly the appropriate phrase, and the connections and the research that is going on into prehistoric times and well before records that are available now. So kind of an overview of all of those aspects coming up next week with, again, uh, UTEP professor David Carmichael next week on the program. So, of course, a whole lot more going on that we'll be keeping talking about here. And, of course, just as a note, we do appreciate people letting us know over on the social media where they're tuning in from. So keep that going. Do appreciate it. But, again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have, again, from my left right, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and Lynn Provenzano, executive director, both with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, OLLI, as it's known, with their fall session going on right now. And, okay, so you all do have a registration season that is particularly important for the classes. But again, when it comes to these tours, there's a little bit more leeway. And so as we're talking about these, again, some have already happened, but most of the, as we are initially airing this episode, swath of them are still to come here. And so with that little bit of leeway, what do you want people to know about if they're hearing about these and thinking, oh, hey, that, that's interesting. I want to go along it. I mean, A, there are the requirements. You need to be a member of Ollie. Do you need to be 50 and over? But beyond that, again, there's just a, well, y'all want people to go on this, right? We do. And we ask that if you, when you become a member, then of course you register for for our, our program and the fall program. And we have several tours that are still coming up. Most of them are full right now. And so uh, we mm-hmm. have people who are waitlisted, but we follow up with everyone to make sure that they can come. And when we release the, ra- the waitlist, um, people then are able to come. We were able to get everyone into this last tour. Mm. And so don't hesitate. Give us a call and, and, and see what's available. And we're, there's plenty to keep you busy plenty to keep you busy and engaged so even don't let the phrase wait list kind of scare you in this way because uh, y'all get in as many people as you can and as you know circumstances situation can't change here i mean pretty much all of these are on wednesdays right correct the tours are 10 o'clock on wednesday mornings yeah, and that is, so they are all at 10 o'clock mm-hmm. on Wednesdays going on through, at the very least, like every other week through uh, through about mid-November at this point, Correct. right? Yes, that is right. The last one is on a November 15th. So that'll be, again, through the bounds of that session here as we then get into the holiday season. So, again, all of this information, again, over at utep.edu slash Ollie, though, again, if people want to, uh, you do have the ability to get one of the paper catalogs here, and you do have them kind of avail- available out in the community or certainly at y'all's offices, right? We have them at the office, and if you would like us to send you one, please call the office, 915-747-6280. We'll be happy to mail one out to you if you did not receive one in your mail. Or you can check us out online at www.utep.edu forward slash O-L-L-I. Yep, and so a lot of good ways to find this here. So, of course, that's we're talking and we'll continue talking about the tours and the many different things going on with that. But uh, when it comes to then the second session, is there a so would you guys argue a little bit of leeway for people if they want to uh, try to get on the, again, ongoing classes as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Register at any time. We're happy to have you join us. 
and let you know about the possibilities and what is still up and available there. So, again, good ways to find this. And there's even other kind of encouragements, I guess, not necessarily on the tours here, but of other things going on, including uh, specifically with the uh, the trolleys. Right, Prince? Oh, yeah. We're actually encouraging people, uh, everybody, uh, whenever you go downtown, you're going to the museums, you're going to the restaurants. One really interesting and fun uh, way to do it is to save money on downtown parking sure. by go to the Glory Road parking garage and uh, park your car there and then jump on the streetcar. Mm-hmm. Streetcars run every 20 minutes mm-hmm. and uh, from 7 a.m. until late at night. And you can ride downtown and you can get off wherever you want uh, mm. along the route. And so uh, it's really a, uh, a good way to... Uh, some people have told us well, I don't go downtown because it's too expensive or I can't mm-hmm. even find a parking place on sure. can't even find a parking meter. And so this is a new way to do it. And uh, of course, an important thing is that our streetcars are actually treasures. right. They are uh, uh, very unusual. Uh, very few cities uh, have them. Uh, we our city wisely took advantage of these streetcars and our our organization actually held them in trust mm-hmm. our our uh, uh, Paso del Norte Streetcar Preservation Society right. held them in trust for 30 years until the city got the money to uh, restore them and put them into operation but uh, so what what the city did was they followed the example of Philadelphia uh, San Francisco that fortunately had these particular cars. They're, mm, they're mm. PCC cars is what the type is, but they're streamlined. And they're associated with that great era of history, the 1930s. Mm. And uh, they're, they're streamlined uh, with the style, the, the design style of uh, the Chrysler Building in mm, New York mm. City, the Empire State Building, and... Then our Bassett Tower right. has those kinds of design elements, too, our Crest Building. And so uh, it's a real beautiful uh, uh, historic artifact that's here for tourism. And so uh, we would like to encourage families to uh, ride the streetcars on weekends and go to the ballpark. or. Or whatever, whatever points downtown yeah. take you there, yeah, absolutely. So, again, that's Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian with the, again, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And, again, also, of course, joining us here in studio being Lynn Provenzano, executive director with the same. Again, all the details on that, utep.edu slash O-L-L-I. Or, again, you can give him a call, 915-747-6280. We're going to go ahead and take that next break right now. But coming out of this break, we'll talk more about the history tours and what can be seen on them and what is still upcoming. So stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso-Juarez Valley. 
it still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free Many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. You can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, we have uh, some of our other great partners in helping promote us and different aspects of El Paso, particularly with our partners over at El Paso Inc. You can go to the B section each and every week, usually towards the back of it, to see the promo announcements and a little bit more detail on the discussion we're having coming up each and every week. Plus, of course, they do their own unique and in depth reporting there. So, El Paso's Business Journal, El Paso Inc is available for home or business delivery or online subscription. That's how I get it these days. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. That's elpasoinc.com. Supporters of El Paso history in their own right, and again, appreciate being in there and us being able to talk about what great stories they have coming up each week. But again, joining us here in studio right now, we do have, again, uh, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and Lynn Provenzano, executive director with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, or Ali El Paso. And so continuing to talk about the tours that we have come up and the ones that are coming up specifically this session, we mentioned a couple of them, one already having passed by the time we are originally airing this episode, along with the other one that is coming up from uh, Ponce's Rancho to Pioneer Plaza. But there's a whole lot more that you'll be cataloging and, again, giving people the opportunity to go out and get hands-on, so to speak, with it here. So what's the next one that you have? You have the one coming up? Next one is Wednesday, actually September going 27th. To be a tour of the McGoffin home mm, okay. and a tour of the McGoffin Historic District. So, in addition to looking at grand Victorian buildings, then sure. they can actually see how uh, people lived in the Victorian era in the 19th century. 
Yeah. So of and, course, the, of course, the McGoffin home that used to be out on the outskirts of what was then El Paso right. now was firmly in the, the center fringe. of El Paso. Right. Here, uh, I mean, it used to be around like an orchard and right. things like that. That some of the historic uh, drawings and maps right. of that time show here. So here's a question: mm-hmm. Where was McGoffinsville? Mm-hmm. Not at the home. And so that's one of the answers that you'll find out when you take the tour. Again, no, yeah, no spoilers, but again, just the McGoffin <laughs> site and the way that it is, you know, it is a historic home in its own right, and the way that it shows the development of right. our region, and that's some of the fat aspects that you'll be going yeah. through during this tour, right? Right. So, so there's uh, so much there, and mm. uh, at one particular time, the river changed course, and it actually took out a corner of the McGoffin's orchards, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and so that led to the settlement in 1960s of the river. And Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the continuing problems that we had uh, and our governments had and all of that. And so it's another thing that we talk about. But uh, the soldiers uh, uh, lived at uh, McGoffinsville. Mm -hmm. That was the first post of El Paso. And so what happened to them? That's another answer that we're going to try to figure out i mean yeah if you ever go down and i don't know if this is one of the tours you all have done but it might be a good one if there's still it's been a minute since i've been down to the union plaza area where all you know, all of the clubs have been because there was at least one building that had been demolished and there's still kind of that vacant hole for it that shows particularly in that area how the development of the river and the way it was that at one point there was you know ground level construction particularly in that area kind of like i would call it now on the underside of the uh, that bridge that leads up to the uh, Chihuahua Stadium right now. Because over there, the ground used to be a floor lower. Because among other things, right. because of the river, basically El Paso had to hike up its skirts. And what was the first floor then became the basement as they then That's essentially correct. buried it to okay. be able to deal with flooding and things okay. like that. We were talking about hotels earlier. Sure. There was a whole string, maybe 20 some odd hotels all along san francisco street Mm -hmm. they were called railroad hotels sure and the one that you see there is the last intact railroad hotel and the first one was actually built in 1887 and uh, we we talked about that in the previous tour and uh sure but it's out by the uh, was out by the train yard off the end of main street Yeah, because, of course, Union Depot out there, a great piece of architecture in its own right. And I'm sure we've talked about that before, y'all. I'm sure you've done tours in and around that area as well because that's that's an obvious one. If I was thinking about where would a history tour be, I'd think, like, of course, yeah, Union Depot because why wouldn't you? Right. I mean, there's the architecture office there, among other things, from Texas Tech at this point in time. Yeah. So then another thing that we talk about is the meal cars and where Uh did they go Mm -hmm. and uh, people no longer had to to actually uh, find a place to uh, feed and water their their horse or their mule or their buggy. They would ride the mule car downtown. Uh, ladies would go do shopping. Uh, they would give uh, the shopping list to the driver of the mule car, hmm. and then uh, their their grocer would load up the car and they would drop it off at their house. Hmm. Wow! And and so that was another thing, you know, uh, for mothers that had a house full of kids and, and had a lot of things to do around the house. And so at, uh, we'll, we'll trace the, the routes uh, of the meal car and we'll answer that question. Who was Mandy? Don't give away the answer. Yeah, yeah. People may may know here, but uh, it's also just kind of fascinating. The more things change, the more they stay in the same. Yeah. The idea of you know grocery delivery and all of that being sure. a you know through modern apps being you know very modern, but maybe not that new of a concept really when you get around to it. So a couple of the tours you at least want to mention here, including the Fort Bliss Replica Museum. You were okay. mentioning about you know McGoffinsville and the area in which was one of the first posts, or you know the post office at Paso del Norte, among other things. But then going to the Replica Museum. That one is one that I've been through in previous years, but it would have been offline for a little while. So the fact that it's back on and able to take the tour is a great opportunity to go out and see that. We're going to talk about life in the cavalry and what it was like. And I was a cavalry officer myself, Mm -hmm. but it was so different. Yeah. It was so completely different. I mean, there's a difference between mechanized and non. Yeah. And and then we're going to, to, uh, cover uh, 
the uh, historic uh, buildings uh, mm. on the post, uh, around the parade field where the barracks were, the, the stables were. And there was a, uh, a young officer, uh, uh, one of the many famous officers mm. that had, had lived and worked at Fort Bliss. His name was George Patton. Mm -hmm. And he was in charge. He was responsible for the blacksmith shop yeah. at Fort Bliss. And so then we're going to look at the railroad warehouses. They were the very first fireproof warehouses mm -hmm. uh, in, in the whole area. And you can imagine with all kinds of materials coming into El Paso as El Paso was booming and growing, mm -hmm. railroad warehouses would catch on fire and burn down. Yeah, and particularly since, again, we're talking about in the advent of the railroad, I mean, the technology coming right. a lot of it, there wasn't necessarily, as much as it's a common feature now, necessarily even fire hydrants everywhere, oh, or yeah. the idea right. of good water pressure being right. a concept. Absolutely. So so we're talking about, you know, pumper, yeah. tankers, or even bucket brigades being right. the answer to that. So we'll see the, the barracks where the, the troopers lived, mm -hmm. but also uh, General Pershing's home. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll... we'll Try to give a a, uh, a feel for what it was like uh, on Fort Bliss uh, from the time of of, uh, of McGoffinsville mm. and from the the time of the twentieth century when our horse soldiers went off to war. They right. left their horses and they went to the Philippines to defend the Philippines in World War Two. Right. And so the many differences that happened there, like you were mentioning, the difference between, you know, actual you know, blacksmith shops to uh, in order to reshoe a horse and then getting into uh, mechanical needs in the way that still exists in that way to this day. Right. At least want to mention a few more of the tours you have coming up, including a subject that we have explored recently on the show, Concordia Cemetery, of which you all will be doing your own tour out that way. Yep. And there's so much history there. And yeah, it's changing all the time. And and uh, there's. Uh, Buffalo soldiers buried there. Certainly. Uh, Chinese who helped to build the railroad. Yep. And, uh, and everybody in between. Uh, a uh, important Masonic cemetery. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, two Hebrew cemeteries. And uh, then after that, we're going to be going to uh, the Segundo Barrio. Yeah, and getting into session two, so starting yeah. in then late September here, but some more of the tours, and so the uh, expected takes and going through the Segundo Barrio Historic District, including the old Bowie High School. Right. My grandmother was actually a teacher there, hmm. and uh, she loved uh, teaching there because she she told us that, that uh, the parents of the kids demanded that they study so that they could improve themselves and become somebody. Mm. And she really uh, enjoyed teaching there. And so, I mean, the history of and the second ward of El Paso is expansive in so, its own right. So uh, trying to get it as a case in point through the tours here. How much walking would you say is overall oh, in these much. tours for okay, anyone concerned yeah. about it? Uh, well, sometimes we walk two or three blocks. Okay. That's about it. And and sometimes we'll out also, we'll stop, start in one place, and then we'll drive to another spot. With uh, it. Okay. And we'll be doing that in Segundo Barrio because Sacred Heart Church is, oh. is on the west side. Sure. And then the uh, uh, the Houchin Community Center, mm. uh, operated by the Methodist Church, and the New York Hospital is on the other side. Uh, the old buoy was on the other side, sure. on the east side. And so uh, we'll... we'll, we'll We'll be talking about Father Carlos Pinto, mm -hmm. who settled refugees of the Mexican Revolution there. He, he found homes for them, very much like what you hear in the news today. You know, people arriving, uh, victims of the Mexican Revolution, and with no place to sleep, nothing to eat. And uh, he helped them, the Methodist Church helped them. Uh, then they eventually started uh, establishing schools, mm -hmm. hospitals. And uh, then uh, there's the El Paso Laundry Building. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was a massive building, tall building for, the, for El Paso. For the time, yeah. And people would go on the roof of that and watch the fighting in the, in the going on yeah, across the river. During the Mexican Revolution. It doesn't— So we'll be looking at yeah. some of those places. 
which just just from the modern standpoint, like I get it. They didn't have TV. <laughs> I don't think radio was even at least not a widely right. available thing. And so the idea of oh hey that's something going on how can we watch it I mean like I I know there's even stories going back to you know the Civil War people going out in their carriages to watch the battles going on is something to do but then of course there was at least a couple of instances of then you know, fire being received maybe not directly but oh, yeah. you know offshoots stray shots that kind of thing so it just it does not sound like a smart idea there's I got to say that also a very important thing that we have recently begun to honor. And that is the soldiers of Company E, oh, of who were great heroes in World War II. Mm. And uh, their heroics had just recently been uh, recognized by the city mm. and the county. And so that's, that's really important uh, to our history to honor uh, those soldiers. Yep, and the Heroes of Company E and the memorial that exists there, uh, right. particularly in Cleveland Square Park, among other things here. So, again, that's Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and again, joining us here in studio as well, Lynn Provenzano, executive director, both with the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, El Paso, Ollie El Paso, again, all those details, and to see some of the tours, as well as some of the previous gatherings they've done, like uh, previous ones there on the, the Mission Trail and the San Elizario Historic District, also going through art as well. Don't want to overlook that there is art appreciation that also comes with this and with all the overall, but got to take that next break right now. Coming back to close out, stay tuned for more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659, and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. 
Thank you all so very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk, and again, joining us here in studio have again have been, again, from my left to right, uh, Prince McKenzie, history instructor and art historian, and Lynn Provenzano, executive director for the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, talking about their tours, upcoming events, but also a lot of things going on with it. I want to at least mention uh, the rest of the tours that we have coming up throughout this uh, rest of this year through the session two of the fall semester for Ollie. And so we had gotten through the Segundo Bado Historic District happening uh, Wednesday, October 25th, but then the uh, few other ones we have uh, on, again, uh, consecutive Wednesdays in this case. Um, we have, uh, starting on November 1st, Montana Avenue Historic District, Lincoln Center and McCall Center, and Henry Trost and Downtown Architecture. So taking through people through a lot of different areas in town there and their own history and those own rights, right? That's right. The uh, Montana Historic District is a beautiful uh, example of early 20th century architecture. Okay. And it's so different from the other historic districts that are older and from those that came later. Sure. And so uh, then the uh, centerpiece of that is a, a great historic home of Senator and Mrs. W.W. W. Turney. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, like the first civic center of El Paso. And so much went on, uh, not only social events, but uh, cultural events. And they even uh, supported the war efforts during World War I, World War II. Mm, mm. And uh, by rallying uh, the housewives of El Paso to uh, uh, save all of their scrap clothing, to be made into bandages, mm. uh, to be sent over uh, for the war effort. And, but uh, then, uh, Mrs. Turney uh, wanted this grand home to become a museum for El Paso, mm -hmm. not only as a social central point, but for a collection point for sure. the treasure of El Paso. So that became the International Museum, and it continues today with sure. a broader scope. And, uh, and so now there's an outstanding exhibition. Uh, we have uh, Hispanic Heritage Month coming up, and... Uh, we mm, have mm -hmm. a, an outstanding exhibition there uh, of the Mexican Revolution and an, another exhibit of the interior of a hacienda. And so you actually see the architectural oh, okay. interior, and people look at, at uh, some of the beautiful uh, buildings in Mexico from the outside, but we actually have an interior. And then there are a lot of other uh, uh, artists to see there, but... Uh, there's a, a lot of artwork by the, the great uh, Juarez artist who's a professor of art today, uh, Manuel, uh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, we he... Part of the tours, yeah, certainly. And so, again, the art appreciation that comes along with it. So, again, yeah. uh, that one happening early November, and then, again, through there, Lincoln Center, McCall Center, and then Henry Trost in downtown architecture. Again, you'll have to go on these tours to hear more about them because, again, the tours are ongoing, and they do happen just about every session these days. And we had a note about accessibility that you wanted to also make about this because, I mean, this is 50 and over, so there is an idea towards making them most accessible. I mean, some of the things that go on with Ollie, like, say, the uh, chair yoga, may be accessible if well, you don't have to have certain abilities still available to you here. But in general, it's meant for everyone at almost any skill level, right? That is correct. You just have to be over the age of 50 to become a member, become a member, and then register for our tours and classes. And otherwise intended to be, uh, you do, again, like uh, if you want to go on a big hike, you can certainly do that. But the way you all do it is that you all make it so that it's available to whatever your situation is, whatever your mobility is, that you're able to go along with this and see it and, and participate. That is correct. That is correct. You know, so many people who have attended these tours come back to me and say, you know, I, I was born and raised here and I didn't know these things. Oh, sure. Uh, we, we often don't know what's in our backyards. And so uh, we make it as, as easy as possible for uh, people to attend. Uh, we have uh, a host uh, that, that goes along with Prince and Ron to make sure that everyone stays safe and on track. And it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. Absolutely. So, again, 
All the details on that, people can, of course, find it online by going to uh, utep.edu slash O-L-L-I. So that's U-T-E-P dot E-D-U slash O-L-L-I for, again, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute Extended University. And uh, find out all the details and register and become a member there. Or, again, contact them even if you would want to get the current catalog and find out what is available there for you. Give them a call, 915-747-6280. Again, 915-747-6280. So, again, uh, that's Lynn Provenzano, Executive Director. And, again, also with us here has been Prince McKenzie, History Instructor and Art Historian. Uh, again, thank you all very much for sticking around with us to talk to us about the history, about the tours that help reveal them, and how it all works through Ollie here today. Thank thanks, you. Andrew. And again, it's a pleasure. Thank- and again, thanks to uh, David Varela, who was not able to join, keep sticking around with us for the second hour, but appreciate talking with him in the first hour there as well. So thank you all very much for all this discussion here. And thank you for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. I've been your host, Andrew J. Polk. We'll be get back again next week on the program, talking about some of the indigenous history and prehistory in our area with, again, a UTEP professor, uh, David Carmichael. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, thank you all for having joined us here, however you may have been doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming through the free and reliable iHeartRadio app or over on our various social media. Let us know where you're tuning in from, and we'll see you all next week.